<laughs> okay. And lastly, Tiana, you are the fate of Forerunna Vita Hallister from the House of Lore. So share your story with us and tell us a little bit about the House of Lore. Uh, Vita is kind of a little bit mad scientist, a little bit absent-minded professor. She is very much gets very concentrated in any piece of work that she's on at the moment. Anything that interests her, she's kind of the scholar of the group. She knows a little bit about everything, and if she doesn't know enough, she will be in a book until she knows everything. And is definitely one of those, oh, you guys were talking? Oh, <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> type of people. Where it's just like things happen around her, and she doesn't even like, she doesn't even blink an eye or like notice at all that the rest of the world is happening while she's like studying. <laughs> and the House of Lore is, is really kind of like that. They're all they're they're the scholars, they're the historians, they are they're the people that are most interested in knowing all the facts all the time. And they're very, you know, everybody knows a know it all, and this is. A house full of them. <laughs> <laughs> that must be interesting when the the time for the battle comes to be able to record all the stories that's going on and fight at the same time. Wow. That is why you're a wizard because you know what? That's why she has quills. That uh, her weapons are actually quills. So she's writing and then kind of goes, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then just right back to writing. End of story. Just don't interrupt me. <laughs> you can think of a thousand horrible quotes involving pens and swords. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I should remark uh, to the listeners that I was in the contest for Tarav, the House of Strength, which is still being cast, incidentally. So if you're an RP gamer and uh, interested in joining the Nine, you can check that out. I have withdrawn to pursue the possibility of helping with Genesis in another capacity. So obviously I have a personal interest in this game, but I want people to know that although I'm objective, I've been helping since the beginning, so I'm obviously kind of biased here a bit, but I still think you should check it out. So, now on to personally, as ladies, uh, I'm going to ask you, and let's see, let's start with Monica. Why did you guys submit applications and videos for this contest, and I guess, tell me about the process of finding out about it. Oh, well, I'm a good person to pick first. <laughs> um, I found out about it the night it was due. Oh! Mm. Yes! <laughs> uh, are you like the one person who's familiar with this contest who hasn't seen my video? <laughs> <laughs> One take, uh, one take only. One take. Yeah. Um, I I found out about it the day the deadline was due, uh, and I agonized over whether or not I was going to do it for about two hours. And at eleven forty-five, I had this gut feeling where I was like, "If you don't do this, you will regret it." So I was like, "You know what? What do I have to lose?" 15 minutes and some hair gel. <laughs> so I, I ran upstairs and I wet my hair and I like swept it up kind of to the sides so that it would look kind of like Kira. Mm -hmm. And because I, I didn't really know anything about it, I saw it, I saw a notice that was like, we're looking for strong women, we're looking for women who know how to game, and I'm like, oh, that's me. I, I'm both of those things. <laughs> and uh, then I just sort of browsed the page really quickly because it was all very last minute and... Um, Tira kind of looks like me. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, we'll go with that. That's easy. Uh, she's a fighty character. I play fighty characters all the time. Let's do this. And, um, you know, I fixed my hair and I put a little makeup on and then I, I, I typed up a script real quick and I literally taped it to my fiancé and I had him hold up the camera so that I could read it like a teleprompter. That is the hardest part, isn't it? To be able to read and look at the camera. Yeah. And <laughs> when, you know, you have a, you know, a partner who's as tall as you are and they're holding the camera like right there so you can look right at it, mm. but the lines are right behind him. He's such a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, here, hold still, tape. And uh, then I, I just just did it. I was like, I'm awesome. That, my, my video is basically me going, I'm awesome, and you want me. <laughs> I just this is my only tape. <laughs> it yeah. obviously worked so for you. The end of it is, if that doesn't impress you, <laughs> I, did this in, I did this in 15 minutes in one take. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so that, I was right. If I had not done that, I, I would have regretted it. This has been beyond incredible. Awesome. Diana, let's go to you. Same question. 
Uh, me? Actually, I found out about it from a girl gaming blog that I go to called The Mary Sue. Oh, they put, like, love it. Tiny, yeah, they put this tiny little thing in, uh, they do things we saw today, and it's like little blurbs about stuff, and I saw it because I was reading, and I went, hey, that looks awesome. And then I obsessively read every single detail of the rules and made sure that everything that I did complied and took out all my gaming books that I was going to go, hey, so I love this, and I like this. <laughs> <laughs> And Props I, are I good. filmed the video, and I ended up having to film it on my phone because my computer, like, my normal computer is not this one. The sound is so bad that it picks up the sound of the fan. So uh. I filmed it on my phone and then uploaded it that night. <laughs> and it was just, it was ridiculous. But I went, you know what? What can I lose? And you know what? The best part is I've gained so much more than I ever thought I would from this, so... You sound perfect for the House of Lore. <laughs> oh, I could probably recite every single rule on that page and the exact deadline. No. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> All right, Mad Mel, your turn. Okay, well, um, they were actually holding an open casting call at my favorite comic book store, Tate's. And um, I saw it on their Facebook page the night before they were having the casting call. Um, and... I was like, you know what? I should do this. So I went to the website and I looked at the characters and I'm like, I sound a lot like perfection when I'm at work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go <laughs> with that one. All right. Right. Um, <laughs> so I ran in my room, I got the poison ivy wig, I looked at all our accessories, I'm like, all right, I have this, I have this, I have this, I need to paint this. I stayed up until like one o'clock in the morning painting everything, gluing everything together. Um, took me like four hours to get the whole costume like together and ready. Next day, went to Tate's, put the costume on. Everyone was like, whoa. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat down in front of the, um, the camera, and my whole interview, if you've ever seen it, is, is a lot of giggles. It's very giggly. <laughs> and me saying the word perfection over and over and over again. Um, but they liked it, so... <laughs> Excellent. Well, cosplaying is kind of a big part of this. So how many of you were previous cosplayers? I know I've read your bios, but to share with the listeners. And, and, <laughs> and is that your favorite thing about this? What, what exactly uh, do you think the role of cosplaying will, will be for the Nine? Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> how about Monica again? Okay. Um, I'm probably the most casual cosplayer of the three people here. Um, I have dressed up in costume at uh, Otakon several times, mm. um, but never, like, I'm not a good sewer, so most of it has been assembling stuff out of, like, things I already had or modifying stuff I could buy, um, and so they were decent costumes, but not, like, the really, really high-quality costumes you see on people who are ser very serious and competitive about that, um, so I'm really excited to uh, be wearing a costume that someone else made. Oh, Asher Levine. I mean, really. I know, like, I will I am? Yeah. Could you get a better designer than this? They look fantastic. Oh, have you seen fantastic. them? We've seen them. Oh. Have to try them on. Oh, really? Now I'm going to have to yeah, ask him about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go to the studio, straight to his studio, and meet him and everybody there in New York. It was incredible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to wearing a costume that was not made at the last minute by me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the stress of the, is it coming apart while you're at the right, con right, going, oh, right. I hate that part. Right, the, the, I have a roll of duct tape in my car because I know I'm going to yeah. need it. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, uh, none of that. So, um, and I, I probably have the most dramatic transformation from person hmm. to fate. Okay. As you can see, I don't have long red hair. <laughs> um, so I am really she looking for the shirts. <laughs> shirts. Stained shirts. I don't hate them. <laughs> I just could care less about them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's I I had the like a proto version of the costume on and when he held it up, I was like, "Oh, I don't know." And then I, I put it on, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was like, I feel sexy. I look incredible. I'm going to own this. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to 
the complete like I part of what I enjoy about role playing is like being somebody else, and mm-hmm. so being able to like look completely like somebody else, uh, sort of the perfect icing on the cake. No pun intended. <laughs> Excellent, Deanna. Uh, same question to you about cosplaying and the role you expect it to to play in your your transformation. Uh, well, I actually started cosplaying as a teenager or actually I, I participated in the SCA which I really wish I was at Penzik this week because that's just <sighs> the two weeks of Penzik. Our rent fair started last weekend. I feel your pain. Well it's it's Penzik. It's the big oh, like, yeah. the one where you bring your war. tent that's actually made from the correct threading of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I started doing that when I was like sixteen and then I competed in my first cosplay competition at an anime convention at sixteen and one novice. Hmm. In South Carolina, I think it was. I, I can't even remember if anime has been in South Carolina or North Carolina. But North I Carolina. just I kept. Thank you. I just kept <laughs> going from there, and it's like a lot more of my stuff is more like medieval-y just because that's just the the genre I like. Okay. But I have done a lot of other things, but the just the outfit that they had me in is just incredible, and I have never had somebody that happy about seeing my boobs. <laughs> I just saw it. Honest. Ask Monica. She was talking to the assistant. He was excited. To... He was so happy. My mom was like freaked out. Uh, I'm... <laughs> he was excited about your boobs before you got there. Yes. <laughs> That's the frightening part. He was excited before I got there, and I did not know that I could have that much like revealing. Like it's just like a triangle like here that's just like open. Mm. Just, like. All the way down to like the edge of where your like bra clasps together. That's like everything exposed. It's insane, but it looks so amazing in person. Like it's I saw it like on the model and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh hey, okay. and then I put it on and I'm like, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have questions about that too, but I wanna I wanna let uh, Mad Mel answer the cosplaying question because then I, then I do <laughs> I do have those questions. <laughs> First cosplaying question for you, Mel. I know you have cosplaying experience, but tell us about what, what you thought about this. Um, I actually love the fact that we're going to be cosplaying as our fates. And after putting the costume on that, yeah, just like Monica said, it's really great to have a costume that someone else made for you and to be able to wear it. Um, it the actual costume itself may be very powerful. So I have, like, this whip and, you know, I, I put it on and, like, I feel like her <laughs> um and I, I as soon as I put the wig on because they had the wig on there for me too I was like I look like her too and it's just so great because when I went there we had all the costumes laid out on the table and just to be able to see like there are a lot there's a lot of diversity with them and that's what I like so much about this game is that it shows like the diversity of the women in the gaming community and like there's there's something for everyone if you like corsets you know go that's a pleasure you know if you like whips come to my house and then <laughs> Laura's got this awesome jacket on Monica gets to wear chain mail it's fantastic everyone gets something did they design uh the costumes based on mm-hmm. you physically um or were they something do you think they designed before they even saw you as characters it's something I wondered if they took a look at you and decided um I mean, I don't know. One of the things I liked about Atira was that it, it had, like, a full central core covering. Um, some of them are a little more revealing than others. Uh, do you think that they designed these based on you? And how do you guys feel about, uh, I guess, the, the the amount of skin you're going to show? Do you think it's something that you're comfortable with? Or do you feel a little bit, mm, what, what's your impression of that? Well, actually, seeing, like, the inside of Asher Levine's studio itself they actually just took literally the picture that they had online of the fates like Mm -hmm. when you go to the profiles they had them up on the wall they took little like bits of each of them and they showed like the progression through it like i got to go and look at all the stuff they were making for the prop and they literally just went that's what it looks like that's what we're making it to and they just took every measurement and it was just really cool to see this giant board with all these different like things all laid out and the levels of completion they were at and they're really like true to form like it was incredible okay anyone else want to comment on that Let's see 
Um, they actually did, like she said, a very, very good job of just bringing the characters to life. 